Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the part 4 of the design system series. If you haven't watched my first 3 videos then I would highly recommend you to go and check it out as well because I have covered a lot of basics as well as how to build a color system in my previous video as well. So go and check it out the first 3 parts and then this part would absolutely make sense. In today's video however, we are going to build a type system in Figma and let's see how can we do that. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we jump into Figma and start building a type system in Figma, let's first understand some basic terms. So what exactly is a type system? So a type system is something that helps you with typography to present your design and content as efficiently as possible. So it's basically a set of guidelines, set of rules that make sure that the typography is used efficiently in your designs. And you must have heard this term that a type can make or break your design. So dealing with typography, having a rule around typography, having a guideline around typography is really, really important. And that's what the type system does. It provides that guidelines of usage for the typography across your designs. So let's first understand the most commonly used phrase in the type system, which is known as type scale. So type scale includes a range of contrasting type styles that supports the need of your product and its content. What it basically means is that type scale is a collection of different font styles that you use to create hierarchy in your content. Um, what, do I, what do I mean by hierarchy? For example, you have um, heading text, you have body text, you have subtext, you have label text, right? All these different body styles for different weights, different sizes provides the hierarchy that you need for your content. For, uh, for example, you want to separate different contents on your page. You use different uh, styles of these uh, type to create that separation. It also makes them easy. It also makes your content easy to scan as well. So that's what a type scale is, just a collection of different font styles and which provides hierarchy for your content. Now I have explained type scale as well as contrast, type contrast in my older video, one of my older videos. So I'll link it up on uh, the top card, uh, hover card that is appearing on top. You can go and check it out and understand what exactly by I mean by contrast in more detail. Uh, by the way, going forward, as we did for the color system, we are also following material design guidelines to create our type system. But uh, we're just using it as a base so that everything is clear and easy to understand. But you're free to use your own um, uh, whatever guidelines you want to build for your company. And in material design guidelines, you have 13 different styles. So I'll be explaining them in the upcoming slides. So this is material designs type sheet and it contains 13 different styles. So for example, you can see display large, you have display medium, display small, headline, large, medium and small. Then you also have titles, then you have Android, uh, for example, labels, and you also have body, large, medium and small. Some of these labels, if you see, you have Android plus web, which means these artist cells are shared between both Android as well as web design. Whereas this one, like display and headline, they are more reserved for the app guidelines. So the next thing is now that you have everything together, how will you apply this type? So hierarchy is communicated through difference in font, weight, size, line height, and letter spacing. And the type scale organizes styles into five different roles. So I'm just very specifically talking about the material design guidelines here. And this everything is in respect to that. So the type scale that material design provides um, segregates everything or organize everything into five different roles. And they are mainly called display, headline, title, label, and body. The ones that I showed you earlier. So the first thing is display text. And as the name suggests, it's the biggest font that you can find on a page. And on the right, I have shown some example. So this is one of the Uber uh, main screen and it says request a trip for someone else. And this is an example of a display text. Then you have headline text. So headline text are suited for short and high emphasis um, areas. So for example, you have two different segments and you want to have headings for them. So that becomes really easy for anyone to scan. And that's where headline text comes in, just like you had a text. And these are good for making primary and secondary passages for important regions of your content so that anyone who is reading your content can quickly scan through it. So the next role is known as body text. And as the, the name suggests, it's used for body copy and it's used for longer passages of text in your app. And this is the most important text style in your uh, type system. So you have to make sure that it's super readable, super easy to scan and does not strain the eyes of your viewers. 
you have to avoid expressive or decorative fonts because that could strain the eyes of the user for reading these longer passages and body text is also meant for smaller screen sizes so you have to make sure that it can be comfortably read on smaller screen sizes as well so body text the most important style forget about everything else body text is the most important thing that you should focus in the first go okay so the next rule is known as label text and label styles are smaller utilitarian styles used for text like inside of a component very small text like on the spills uh, text on a music player like the timer on the music player or on the uh, bottom navigation the uh, names of the tab so you have to make sure that you use it in moderation you don't have to overdo it because it's a very uh, readable font and it's it's not a very readable font and it's on the verge of legibility so you have to make sure you don't overdo it use it scarcely in moderation and it's only used for very smaller and utilitarian styles don't use like big paragraphs using this font style okay and that's it for the basics now let's jump into figma and create our font system so we're in figma right now and as i explained earlier i'm using material design guidelines as a baseline to create my own type system now you're free to use any type system that is available in the market so you can use uh, material design guidelines you can also use shopify's atlassians you also have microsoft's fluent design system so you can pick any guidelines and build your typography system on top of it uh, if you want to build everything from scratch that is also perfectly fine if you're working in a big organization you already have uh, use cases set up then you can build everything from scratch as well you don't have to follow these guidelines but just that these guidelines uh, these systems that have been created by other big companies they have done it after a very long research and they know how to create better sort of uh, hierarchy as well as contrast so it's totally up to you how you want to go in this video i am going with material design guidelines and we'll be substituting our own font here because uh, google recommends roboto but we are going to use our own font but rest of the things we are going to follow the same thing okay so you can also do the same thing you can pick up any one of the uh, baseline design guidelines and then on top of it just substitute your own font and follow their guidelines so let's do that so first of all let's this is the cheat sheet of their uh, design uh, type system now let's me quickly explain you the nomenclature that um, is used and is recommended in the industry so for example uh, material design guidelines recommend five types of roles so you have display you have headline you have title you have label and then you have body okay and within those also you have multiple variations of the font styles now let me quickly explain you the nomenclature that is used here so for example display and then you have the large variant of it so display large is the name that we have given it to it then the font name so you have roboto font then you have font size uh, slash followed by line height and dot and after that you see a zero here right this zero represent spacing or the kerning so letter spacing or kerning is mentioned in the end okay similarly here uh, for display medium you have roboto 45 slash 52 45 is the font size 52 is the line height and then dot and then zero zero is basically your uh, letter spacing if you see in some cases mostly cases it's zero the letter spacing the font handles it well but in some cases you need minor tweaking to have that kerning perfect and that's what uh, they have uh, presented here so for example in case of title text uh, especially 16 font you need to have like plus 0.15 as a uh, letter spacing so they have mentioned everything here and we are going to follow the same rule um, to create our own system so we are not going to use roboto as a font we are going to use circular as our default font but you can pick anyone that you like and you can follow the same guidelines in that case you might need a minor tweaking in other things but mostly we are going to follow the same thing okay so let's start with this so let's create a display large family here so what i'm going to do is i'll hit t on my keyboard to invoke the text field okay and i have selected circular already here and let's just write display large so first we'll see how to write it here like in a ui form and then how to convert this into a style okay in figma so display large hyphen then we know we want to name the fonts so we are using circular so circular is here slash now you want uh, the font size so you want 57 font slash you also want 64 as a line height then dot and then zero 
So now I just randomly use any font style and any font size and written it down. Let's just now tweak uh, to these values. So first thing is 57. Let's do 57. Okay. And then you have a 64 as the line height. So you see line height here. If you don't give anything, then Figma will automatically use auto. Uh, this may or may not work for your liking, especially for larger fonts, you might have to tweak these line heights because automatically it could get to a really larger size. So uh, just make sure that you change it at least for the uh, larger fonts. So for example, here we need 64 as the line height. So we'll do that. And as soon as you do, you see a minor tweaking happening here. And then you have zero as the letter spacing. So letter spacing is mentioned here and it remains zero. So now everything is set up. We have 57 and this depends upon you what weight you want. You want medium or bold, see what works for you. So let's say we go with bold. Now that we have created this style visually, let's see how can we add this style to the Figma library, okay? So now if you see, um, we have set up everything here. You have to go to these four dots, which says style. And once you click on it, you see nothing is available because you have not created anything before. So what you need to do is just like for colors, you have to click this plus icon. Okay, now closely follow the way we are doing nomenclature. Now Figma has uh, improved the naming conventions. So you don't have to do a lot of things. So as we said, in the earlier thing, it's display large. Okay, so I'm going to call it display. Now to create a folder like structure that I've explained in even previous videos that you want under display heading, you want everything else to be mentioned. So you can use display and then use slash and this will create a folder like structure. So display will become the heading and now you can call the font style as large. Okay. And you don't need to mention anything else now. Uh, the rest of the things will be taken care by Figma directly. So display slash large. And once you hit create style, you see a style has been created here and it says display slash large. And once you click on the drop down, you will see under display heading, you have large. And if I just quickly click on it and show you, it also show you 57 slash 64 automatically. So it's showing you the font size as well as the line height value directly. Just the way we have mentioned here, Figma is automatically showing it. Uh, when you click on these uh, setting icons, you can change things here. You can also add descriptions. So for example, if you want this style to be used only for, uh, let's say heading text, or maybe the largest font on the style, you can just write it here actually. Largest text on the page. And you can add instructions here. So it will also become a style guide for you, right? And then you, it has all the properties here. Now, if you want to add additional properties, so for example, you want, for example, this may be a link text, right? So you want an underline always be there. So you can use this, you can add these rules here. You can add underline, uh, you can give paragraph spacing, you can give indent, paragraph indent, you want it to starting from left, right, center, okay? Uh, you have list spacing, you also have case. You, If you want this text to be always uppercase, you can do that here. You want it to be lowercase, you want it to be title case, you want it to be sentence case. Every other option is here. If you allow these options, then Figma will force it on the main text. So whichever styles, whichever text that will inherit the style will follow these guidelines or rules from here, okay? So you can do all those things here. And once everything is set, it'll appear in your font style, okay? And if you hover over it, it'll also give you the instruction test that you already added. So this is how you add it to your uh, style library in Figma. Let's quickly build the rest of the font styles um, that we have created with the circular font, and I'll get back to you. So now we have created our own style system and if you see on the right, you have all the styles available for us. So you have display, you have headline, if I just expand it, so if you see display is now become like a small subgroup or a folder and you have all the other variants here, large, medium, small, similarly for headline, title, label and body. So now it all contains all the uh, variants that we wanted to build for this type system. So now what will happen is. Once you build all this type system, if you see here, 
if it's applied to any typography if if it's applied to any text in your design it automatically shows with this symbol and what type style is applied to it in case you are adding let's say a text fresh text for example hello so yeah so if it's if you see it's a fresh text and nothing is applied to it it'll just say text and then circular and whatever it is in the raw format now if you want to apply it a specific style to it you can just hit the style icon and you will see every style that is available in your figma library now and anyone from you or your team can use this for example now let's say i want a headline small or headline medium to it i'll just select it and it'll automatically apply all the rules that you have created here to this particular text okay so that's how you create uh, styles that how that's how you create font styles and add it to your figma library and once you do all this it becomes really easy because now everyone has to pick something from the figma library directly and they cannot go wrong from there right and you have added everything you have also added rules so everything becomes more consistent everything becomes more uh, better simpler and faster because now all the equation all the mathematics of understanding how these things work is now out of the equation because now you have created rules for it so that's how text works text styles work i hope you understood it i hope you now know how to make text styles as well as color styles which we have picked up in the last video and in upcoming videos we'll build more components in figma so that's it for today's video let me know how you like this video and i'll see you in my next part take care bye bye